All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders about their companies, their visions for the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Amy Molk, who is the founder of Beanstalk. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Thanks so much for having me. It's great. How are you? I'm doing really well. I got coffee in hand, and I'm looking forward to an awesome conversation with you about Beanstalk. For people that haven't heard of Beanstalk or they're not familiar with what you're working on, can you kind of share what is it and what you're working on with Beanstalk? Yeah, so Beanstalk is a platform for um, incredible live interactive kids educational entertainment. Uh, The whole idea was to create content that was truly engaging and entertaining like Mr. Rogers or Sesame Street, but to do it in a way that was highly interactive um, and really brought kids into the content while also pulling them out of the screen and getting them uh, to do real world physical activities. So let's kind of walk through a experience that an average, um, I guess, kid or class, like, well, I guess two questions. One, who is the, like, does this go through classrooms? Is this direct to families? I guess, how does someone interact with Beanstalk? And like, walk me through like the experience if I was, you know, a kid on this platform, how could I engage with it? What are different things I could watch? Things like that. Yeah, so right now, Beanstalk is geared towards kids under the age of six. We know that's when so much foundational um, exploratory learning happens. So we're really focused on this idea of creating creative confidence uh, and empathy and all the things that really grow a child into an incredible learner, not to learning your letters or your numbers, although that's wonderful and we do have content around that, but it's all about creating incredible foundational learning. And so um, that's our audience. And uh, you come on to Beanstalk and every morning we have a live event that is around a theme for the week. So it's like Shark Week every week. Um, This week it's Dream Week. And so we are exploring actual literal ideas about dreams and what that means to dream at night. Um, But we're also doing awesome things a lot around Native American culture with dream catchers and um, pulling in people, experts from various museums that are focused on those types of cultures. That's one thing that we love to do at Beanstalk. We love to get out and meet experts. Um, Next week is book week and we're going to a book bindery and learning how books are actually made. We're also going to be meeting some top selling kids authors and having them come on and engage and interact with the kids and help them write their own stories. So we're constantly trying to create these really extraordinary live events. And then in the afternoon, we have clubs, which are led by our performers who are also teachers. So people who are part of the Beanstalk teaching staff have experience in teaching kids. Um, They have some type of educational background, but they also are trained performers. So they might be improv actors or they might be classically trained theater performers and um, they love to do this. This is their dream. They just want to engage with kids and that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's awesome. I, 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 earlier this year and late last year, I worked, um, Uh, worked with a company in this space doing something different and it's so rewarding like just like working kind of uh working for the kids for the young and like for the education things like that it's um it's awesome which makes me kind of well i know why did you get into this so i guess in other words what's your origin story and kind of you know how did you get started with beanstalk yeah yeah for sure and i'll tell you you know being a founder um, and a CEO is not not an easy job and um, it's super stressful. And I just love when I get to go into the studio and see we, we the, the screen is such that I can see all the kids that are actually live in a Beanstalk class. And I mean, it like, that's it, right? Like you see those smiling faces and those engaged um, kids and, and it's the magic. And that, that that's why I do it every day. That's why I get up and I do this because it is my goal to really shape uh, the next generation and uh, make a foundation for learning that's accessible to everyone. And we know the way that kids begin their journey in education really sets them up for the future. And so we really make this accessible and we do charge people. So um, you had asked me before kind of um, our our business model and it is direct uh, to families and they pay a monthly subscription, but we 
also offer a something called the Magic Beans program. So for every subscription we sell, we offer a subscription to a family that wouldn't otherwise be able to afford Beanstalk. And so that's really why I did it. I wanted to level the playing field in education. And my background's in the entertainment industry. I come from years of working in Hollywood. And I became a mom. And I've always been passionate about early education um, and education policy. It's something I've done in my personal life um, from a philanthropic standpoint. And it was time to marry the two. And um, it's really exciting. And I, I have to ask, you know, because there's so much to do with, with a company like this, I have to ask, you know, what's an average day for you? Like, what time do you spend, you know, potentially like building product versus spending time with kids versus like hiring? What's, what's a day in the life of the founder of Beanstalk? Yeah, I mean, I, I always love speaking to what's actually going on in my world. So I um, just closed our initial round of funding. Um, and that is such a crazy experience. Um, you know, people tell you about it and they, you, you, you know, you think you're prepared and then you go through it. And it's, it's, it's an all consuming um for me, really awesome. I, I I really loved it, and that probably comes from my years in Hollywood of negotiating deals and pitching, and you know, it's very much in my DNA to do that. So I actually really enjoyed it. But it's not this clear cut path. You know, we um, we're a tech stars uh, company, and so you have all these experts coming in and preparing you for what a fundraise is like. And, and sure, some things definitely fell in line with the norms, but then, you know, at the 11th hour, something totally flips and you've never even heard of about it and you're calling advisors and they're like, wow, I've never seen this before. Um, and you're maneuvering it. So that was truly so much of my life. And unfortunately, um, during that time, I really was pulled out of the business a lot. And I personally really miss being in the day to day and also the visionary planning um, of the company. So luckily I have an incredible chief product officer who was able to really step in and, and, and push that forward while I was more bogged down with the day to day of fundraising. But on a given day now um, that I kind of have uh, some normalcy, I spend the majority of my day um, experimenting. Um, we're constantly running experiments. So um, this week, the, my, my focus is on what would happen if we brought kids on to teach other kids. So um, that's been a really fun week this week because I've been able to work with kids and help them kind of think about how they would come on and teach. Um, some weeks, the experiments are less fun, um, you know, more about like optimization or something like that, um, that for me, it's really, I'm a human connection person. So that's really where I get my, my energy. Um, but I spend a lot of time experimenting. I also spend a lot of time thinking about the vision for Beanstalk. So Beanstalk really, we, um, we were ahead of our time in so many ways and COVID hit and now we're dealing with a ton of competitors um, because it's such a relevant thing. So I'm always trying to think two steps ahead, four steps ahead um, to where trends are going so that we can really be trendsetters and thought leaders in this space. And to to kind of capitalize on being a trendsetter and thought leader, you know, looking out into the future, obviously you you've mega plans for this, right? Uh, considering you just raised around, which congratulations on that. So my question for you is, and you obviously have big plans for this. What do those plans look like? You know, five, ten years from now, um, what does Beanstalk look like? Or I guess in other words, what's the big vision here, and like what direction are you rowing in? Yeah, yeah. So it's funny. Um, we obviously have a very big vision, but uh, through this process, I. I'm just super excited to see where we go to, because I think part of being a great leader is being able to kind of roll with the punches and, and, and really go to places that there's actually a consumer need. Um, and, and so that's really exciting for me, always being open-minded. Um, that's something I've learned very fast. Uh, you got to be open-minded and you got to be willing to be wrong uh, to be successful. So um, the vision though is really around this idea of creating interaction between people all over the world, every single kind of walk of life through content. And the reason we pick content for kids is because it's a way that kids really feel safe to be who they are. So you look at, you know, kind of um, 
the gold standard in how to engage kids. And you think of things like Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers, both places where kids are really safe to be who they are. And so if we create this community through entertainment, but then we allow people to connect with each other and we allow them to interact not only with the programming, but with each other and make, you know, the new age version of pen pals all over the world. What could we do to open up kids' worlds and allow them to see things differently and truly be world thinkers? And that's really the vision is to create this interactive platform. Um, and so that's where we're going right now. That's what, you know, when I talk about experimentation for this week, it's really about how do we give everybody a voice on Beanstalk? How do we create a place where people can come, kids? I mean, I keep on saying, people. They, they are people, they're kids, but that's what we're focused on. Something that is safe where kids can connect with each other the way that grownups connect with each other on TikTok or the way that grownups connect with each other, you know, on other various platforms. But that's really what we're, we're striving for. And um, I'm really excited about it. And to make that happen, you obviously need some help, right? It takes a village to grow a startup um, and to make it happen. So my question for you is, how can the forward thinking founders community help? Are you hiring? Are you looking for investors? Although it sounds like you're not, congrats on that. Are you, you know, are you looking for kids or parents or families to get on? You know, how can the, how can the community assist? Yeah, for sure. So I'm always looking to meet people who are as passionate about this as everybody else on my team who brings something unique to this team. Um, so yes, we're always hiring, um, sometimes maybe not as quickly as we'd like for uh, budgetary reasons, but we're always hiring and I'm always looking to meet new people. Right now, we don't have a specific need, like we don't have a, a, a spot that we absolutely have to fill, um, but that is something I love to do. I love to connect with people. Like I said, that's what fills my bucket. Um, we really need help growing. We need to get the word out. We need people on testing, trying, giving us feedback. Um, it's really about bringing on users right now. And so that is what is most helpful to me. Cool. And, and if someone, you know, is, is hearing you and they're really interested in what you're doing, they want to help, how can they, how can they do that? You know, what's your URL, um, you know, or I guess more so how can they find you? What's your website? You know, can they email yep. you? Are you on social media? How can they connect? Yeah, for sure. So the best thing to do is go to beanstalk.co, C-O, um, and check us out. Uh, sign up for a, a free seven-day trial, take some classes. We also now, we just introduced a feature where you can actually hop into a live stream and check out what's going on on Beanstalk. You won't be able to interact, but you can be an observer and see what's going on. So you can do that. You don't even have to set up a trial. Um, I am really, I, I mostly am active on LinkedIn. That's where I usually am. So you can find me on LinkedIn, um, Amy Molk, M-O-L-K. Um, and also our Beanstalk Instagram. I'm really uh, active on that. So that's another place just at Beanstalk uh, on, on Instagram. All right, cool. Well, hopefully people listening to this, you know, are excited by this as I am and they reach out and they, and they, and they want to help. I appreciate you I'd love it. coming on to the podcast and sharing your vision with us. And I wish you the best of luck with Beanstalk. Thanks so much, Matt. It was such an honor.